This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at FBHP.com. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and we are at the 2024 NFL Combine in Indianapolis. Joined by Titans General Manager Rand Carthon. Rand Carthon, what have you already been doing since you arrived in Indianapolis? Walking. A lot of walking. <laughs> um, no, we hit the ground running, uh, got in town yesterday about 5.30, uh, about 5, and got to the hotel about 5.30 and went straight into uh, interviews. First interview was at 7.20, and we went until 10.40 last night. There's a lot going on at the scouting combine, and what everybody talks about in this media room is the workouts. But for you, Ray and Carthon, you are most excited about what part of the combine? Actually meeting these guys, right, because we've seen them move around. we watched the tape. Um, we saw them at All-Star Games, and there are a lot of guys we saw in the fall, you know, uh, whether it was myself or A-Rob or our other scouts. We've seen guys in the fall, but now you get your hands on them. Now you get to actually meet them as people, um, and, th and that's the part I love the most and uh, really enjoyed, you know, meeting uh, the group of uh, D linemen that we had last night. Rand, a lot of teams take this week very differently in terms of just coming in, being here for eight days and just basically hunkering down. How do the Titans do it now? What can you share about that? Oh, we do it the same way. Um, but, again, we put a real emphasis on the, um, on the interview portion because you got to understand, for the underclassmen, this is your first time really being able to get your hands on them you know, and get that exposure to them. Um, some of the seniors, if you're at All-Star Games, you get to have your same meeting time. Um, but for these underclassmen, it's, you know, our first time getting our hands on them. And then for Callie and I, you know, this is our first time really being able to spend some time with some of these seniors as well. So that's a, a, a real important part for us and making sure that the way we drive the interview, um, we're not spending so much time on, hey, tell us about where you're from and how you grew up, because those things, we only get 20 minutes. And so those things can take up the first 10, and then you can't get to the questions that you really need to answer. Um, so we rely on our scouts to have, you know, already have that laid out where they're from, you know, what type of parent structure they grew up in. But now we can get right into the, you know, the important parts of what we really want to know. This time last year you were a new general manager and things were coming at you really fast. Now you've had a year with this scouting department, with this group of people. How has that impacted the way that you're able to approach things with the prospects when you're doing those interviews that maybe you weren't able to do last year because there was a lot going on? I think we have a better understanding of each other. Um, I think they know me a little bit better that they don't have to, you know, if you will, tiptoe around, you know, me being the new guy um, last year and kind of, you know, it's always that transition when you go from one regime to another and you're worried about your job security. So, you know, um, I think there's a level of comfort there. Um, I know I know our guys very well. I know their strengths and their weaknesses. And so we play off of each other that way. And I think I just think as a, as a gr uh, group, we have uh, more unison now. Rand Carthon, how much that you find out during the NFL Combine will be a factor in who comes in for the 30 visits that you have to Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park, which start actually on March the 5th. No, it's a big part of it. Um, actually, this morning, um, probably at about 5.30 this morning, I shot A-Rob a text saying, based off our interviews last night, is there anybody we want to get ahead of, spend more time with, that we felt like we needed a little bit more time with, um, to just kind of generate that list uh, throughout the week as we go um, so we can jump ahead and get ahead of getting guys in. Um, and so that's part of it. And then you're only allowed 45. Back in the day, it used to be 60. So are there some guys that were on? Talking you know, about the number of visits. The number of, well, the number of uh, interviews. interviews. Yes. Um, and so who are our 15 that we would have looked? Because I asked the guys to still put 60 together. And so who are our 15 that didn't quite make it that we know we definitely want to get in for a visit? And let's get ahead of it and jump those guys in early when we get back. As you're going through this week, the combine obviously is happening. and You're working on the draft, but free agency is also right around the corner. How are you balancing the two things and knowing that you've got a draft on the way, but you've also got some other roster moves that can be coming up? So the way we structured it, um, you know, and we did things. We did it a myriad of ways in San Francisco where we, we would have free agency meetings um, first and then we have college meetings last. And so what I want to do this year um, is let's get college meetings going, 
and we have that process. And then we went free agency meetings last. So we had free agency meetings prior to coming here. And because as soon as, as soon as we leave here, we'll have another free agency meeting with the coaches. And then the actual quote unquote tampering window starts. And so that'll keep us in that mind frame, you know, as we're, as we're moving forward. The tampering window actually begins on March the 11th for the OT people to know. And free agency begins at three o'clock on Wednesday, March the 13th. Rand Carthon, uh, you have talked so much about football character in the offseason as you build forward. As you talk about that in the free agency meetings and you get into that here in Indianapolis with the interviews, how much can you find out how much players love football, that football character part of it? Well, you know, in the pros it's a little bit harder, right, because they're not in your, in your building. They don't live with you every day. Um, so you rely a little bit on the on what they were in college, you know, when they came out. Now on the, the flip side of it, you may have a guy who was a quote-unquote character guy, you know, coming out um, that may have cleaned up their acting over the last four or five years, whatever it is. They haven't had any issues. But that's a place where we rely on our, re, our resources and our contacts. Um, you know, we have a veteran group. Um, in our pro department uh, with Brian Gardner and Kevin Turks and Brandon Taylor. These guys have been around a while. They have a, you know, a really big Rolodex. And so there's a lot of information that we can get to uh, just in terms of whether it's injuries, whether it's you know, how these guys practice, how they work on a day-to-day -day basis that gives us uh, confidence in you know, moving forward in free agency and bringing some guys in. How much have you and Brian Callahan had to have conversations to get on the same page about what those characteristics are, what those kind of indicators are of what makes a character guy a good person, really a Tennessee Titan? Well, it started from, from the interview process, you know, because that was a part of our line of questioning was asking the coaches how much involvement have they had in, in, um, in personnel um, in terms of, you know, the scouting process and then what are things that are, you know, important factors to them. And so we asked those questions, a part of it. So we understood kind of like where his thought process was in terms of football character. And, you know, since he's been hired, you know, we spend a, a quite a bit of time together. And so, you know, I think we're both on the same page. And you can look at the way the coaching staff was built. The coaching staff was built in the same way that we're acquiring players, right? Like we want talented people in here, but we want even better people that love the game of football and care, care about it. Last question. When you go before the media here in a few moments, <laughs> the OT people will hear this after the fact, but let's see how good you are. What do you think the media is going to want to know most from Rand Carthon? About Derrick Henry. <laughs> I think my life is these – last two draft cycles have I've gotten more Derrick Henry questions than I've gotten questions about myself <laughs> um, and fans around town when I see him that's the number one question like hey we're keeping Derrick right so I'm, I'm that's the one I'm probably expecting the most and what probably you, first what are you going to tell the media about that I mean what I've always told them we don't discuss family business in, in public and you know when, when the time is right for us to have conversations with his team we'll, we'll do that Ladies and gentlemen, the most consistent man in America. <laughs> Titan, <laughs> Titans <laughs> Executive VP and General Manager Rand Carthon, thank you so much for your time on the OTP. Nah, no problem. SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any other live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So... Titans fans can fan. Amy Wells and I now pleased to be joined at the 2024 NFL Combine by Titans head coach Brian Callahan. Is this overwhelming? No. No. No, it's not. It, uh, it feels like all the Combines feel. I just have to talk to more people. Um, <laughs> no, it's been great. It's been great. Uh, it's, it's a short burst for us. I mean, it's a three-day sprint for with meetings with people around the league, with all the 60 players we have to interview and then obviously with the with the media as well so um, things I feel pretty prepared to do but uh, there's a lot more of it. From a football standpoint how does your role change from being the offensive coordinator in Cincinnati to being the head coach of the Titans at the Combine? I would say the biggest difference is I have to pay attention to the defensive players now. Um, <laughs> I have, you know I'm, I'm in all the, the interviews with all the defensive linemen last night and so it's just more it's just more more there's just more things I have to pay attention to um, a little more things involved like league wide uh, as far as new head coaching things meetings you have to go to uh, rules that come up just just more things but um, that's probably the biggest difference is just uh, the the 
the big picture of the whole team versus just me worrying about the offensive players. With such a bigger volume of just information that you need to ingest, how much are you leaning on your staff that is still pretty newly assembled to kind of help you wade through all of just the things that you have to be responsible for? Yeah, uh, uh, they're a huge part of the process, and that's why I tried to hire as many good people <laughs> as I could hire is that I know I'm going to need them uh, in their roles and doing their jobs at a high level, which um, – that's the expectation, and, and I think that we'll, we'll get that from them. So, uh, Plus, we got a whole scouting staff that, that really knows what they're doing, and uh, that part's really important. When you have a coaching staff and a scouting staff on the same page looking for the same players, um, now you really feel like you, you have a good vision for what's, for what's to come and what players that fit our, uh, fit our organization. And uh, ultimately, I wouldn't be here. I had to mention that Tom Jones, some of you guys have met Tom Jones, but uh, he's our chief of staff, assistant to head coach, and he's – uh, he keeps me going, keeps me organized, and it be really difficult to do all these things without his help too. So uh, he plays an important role for me. What is Brian Callahan's most important question in the player interview se sessions? Um, I try to figure out where I can interject because the scouts know these players. They've visited them. They've seen them in person. They've seen them at the All-Star Games. Uh, I try to find maybe something about their personality as I listen to them talk. Uh, sometimes I just like to hear them talk about the scheme, you know, where, where I can diagnose whether they really have a good grasp of, of what they're talking about in that particular element. So try to make them get specific. I know these interviews can be a little bit canned uh, and rehearsed with all the training that goes into them uh, for the players. And you try to get them off their script a little bit and see if you can break down uh, a lot of some of that preparation and see a little bit more about their detail, their attention to what they did in their scheme. So sometimes I try to do that, see if I can break the break the rehearsal a little bit and uh, get get a little bit more underneath the hood, if you will. You mentioned that you're taking in a lot more like league-wide information, and there's a lot more of that going on. You are not new to the National Football League. <laughs> this is a place that you are very familiar. But are people approaching you different? Are the conversations that you're having as you're milling about being a little bit different? Uh, so far, no. Um, you know, these are a lot of people that I've been around for a long time. And so uh, all of our jobs and teams have changed over years. And uh, most of those relationships with those people are, are pretty consistent that I have from, you know, this is my 15th combine. So uh, feel pretty good about, about that. There's a lot of people here that I don't know, which is a weird feeling where you're, I've sort of grown past all the guys I've come up with are sort of all come up as well. And so there's a, there's a group of people in the in the lower ranks that I used to know really well that I don't know uh, the same way anymore. So that's a weird, a little bit of a weird feeling. I'm 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 young, but I'm old now all of a sudden. So <laughs> um, so that part that part's a little bit different. But as far as the people I see and the conversations I have have been pretty consistent the way they usually are every year. Brian Callahan, is this also an opportunity for you to get to know the Titans personnel staff better? Mm -hmm. It is. I, I've been I've been sitting in the draft meetings. I've sat in some of the free agency meetings. We've we've done our, our profile tape uh, as as offense and defensive staff with our our scouting staff, and so I've gotten to see them a little bit. But this is fun for me because they they run the interviews in in the interview room and to see each guy's personality. These are the players that they've been scouting for for two and three years. Um, some of these guys, and so you get a chance to really see them interact with the player and you get to hear their knowledge. So that part's been fun. I, I'm, I think we've got a really good scouting staff and it makes me excited about uh, the types of players we can bring in with those, with those guys leading the charge. Rand Carthon mentioned the schedules that you guys have had with draft meetings and free agency meetings and balancing the two. In your head, how do you keep everything straight? Because you're working on multiple I guess facets mm -hmm. of the Titans roster. Yeah, we had to make sure we got our new coaches through their evaluation process we wanted to see what they thought of our roster of our players um, what they deemed important as far as needs uh, who, who fits what we're going to do um, all those conversations and then the next part is you know working in conjunction with free agents in the draft they work together because that's it's it's two different ways to acquire players and sometimes there might be more players in free agency on a particular side of the ball, there might be more in the draft. So you, you sort of work those two in conjunction to find how do you best fit, uh, fill and fit the players to your needs and your roster. And so uh, it's a fun process and they sort of work congruently. Like you're, you're working on both at the same time trying to figure out how do we get the best collection of players for this acquisition cycle. It's interesting that you mention all of the uh, new coaches needing to evaluate the Titans roster and what they have because everybody has kind of different preferences, different mm -hmm. evaluations of what 
a player can do. How are you bringing all of that together to get everybody on the same page? Because everybody is coming from such different perspectives. Well, that's that's part of the reason why we we've done these um, these these profile tapes and, and these kind of position criteria where we we spell out uh, exactly what we're looking for for how we want to play football. And um, I think that's an important piece for the coaches to have their input for our scouting staff to hear all of the things that we look for um, and then they can start to look for the same things and, and use those as a guideline um, to what fits. And so that was really the first thing the new staff did when they got in the building was as they were evaluating the roster, start to spell out what we're looking for uh, in each position and what that looks like. And um, some of it's uh, a physical measurables, some of it's going to be more uh, uh, there's both things. There's the physical measurables and there's the, the character, the makeup, the profile of the person um, that matters as well. So uh, it's, it was a it detailed process that took a little bit of time, um, but that was sort of the first major project those guys have when they walked in was to do that. For Titans fans joining us for the OTP, they may not know what you mean when you talk about profile tapes. Can you go further and, and be specific about what those are yeah. that you've been putting together? Yeah, so for example, let's say uh, an outside linebacker in, in our system, um, there'll be a, a, a measurable, you know, we, we need – between 6'3 and 6'5 and between 255 and 265 pounds. And here's where, uh, here's the 40 time. But what really matters is the 10. You know, what, what, here's, the, here's the threshold for what the 10-yard the time means uh, and what, what it should be either at or under. Um, and then there's the makeup part. What, is, what does it look like to play outside linebacker for us? What's the, uh, the physicality portion, the toughness? Uh, the football intelligence, the the character of the person. So there's this whole uh, set of measurables. And then even in, in with that by position, then there's a roster construction piece. And you're looking for you need one, uh, uh, an on-the-ball Sam linebacker versus a rush uh, outside linebacker, which both end up rushing the passer. But how does the construction of that room look like? You need one elite player. You can You can get by with two or three mix and match players. How do we best build that room? And so – um, you know, obviously you have these criteria that are, are everyone wants the best of all of it. Um, but then the next set of questions and then the things we have to answer with the scouting staff is what are you willing to, where can we miss? Where, what, what part of the player is, is non-negotiable? What, what things do you have to have versus uh, how, can you, how can you massage it when you don't have uh, T.J. Watt? You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's the standard, but what does it look like when you can't find him? Where are you allowed to? Uh, to be flexible in those criteria. So uh, it's a really good exercise, uh, and it allows everyone to get on the same page. It's like a recipe. It is very much like a recipe. Putting together yes. the recipe for a Super Bowl-winning team. Yes, that's that the chance. very interesting, Mike Keith. It is very interesting. <laughs> Do you, are you ever really willing to go outside of those parameters, or is the goal to not go outside of those parameters when you draft based on yeah. those tapes? The goal is to, is to stay within those as best you can. Um, and I've, I've given the example before. If, if you look at the, the Baltimore Ravens, right, the Baltimore Ravens defensive line has looked the same for probably 20 years. Um, the numbers and names change, but what they look like is, is, is very consistent over time. Um, that's because of Ozzie Newsom and Eric DaCosta, and there's continuity and consistency in what they look for, and that's why they look the way they do year in and year out. We try to get to that point. There is always going to be a moment where there's a, a great football player that might not fit exactly what that is. And the way that we always term it is, what, what are they, what's elite about them that isn't – if it doesn't fit the profile, what's elite that we can work with? Um, and that's generally how you, you make exceptions. You don't want to make too many exceptions because then you end up with a bunch of exceptions. And now you don't look like the roster you want to look like. Um, so you're very careful in, in when those things come up. But – there's always an exception for an elite player that doesn't necessarily fit the profile. So what you're saying is using outside linebackers, pass rushers, if Dwight Freeney is there and he, he doesn't fit any of those measurables, he's six feet tall, he weighs 270 pounds, and he's basically the Tasmanian devil yes. is what it amounts to, you would say, yes, but we would like to have Dwight Freeney on our football team. Correct. That's probably the best way to put it. There's going to be – uh, a trait or two that that makes them much more than just a profile, and that's when you're willing to to make an exception um, to that to that criteria that you're looking for. And uh, but again, you just you got to be mindful. You can't do it, you know, all the time because then all of a sudden you end up 
now you're small and you don't have the physicality and all those things. So there's there's a there's a bendable process, and you just got to make sure it's you're still sticking to what you're looking for most of the time. As you're constructing this team, are you excited about all of the options that you have given that this team has a lot of cap room and a high draft pick? Yeah, that's um, that's an ideal spot to be in if you're if you're trying to um, add depth and add competition and add players is that we have the resources to do it. Uh, obviously, a, a top 10 pick is, is a huge uh, bonus. Um, that's why the league's built the way it is, is they want the parity, and so the, the teams that are good pick later. The teams that aren't as good pick high uh, with the opportunity to improve your team quickly. And so the cap room is another part. You can really improve your team with, with um, relative quickness if you, if you find the right players. It's not always about just going to get the most expensive ones or the ones that the, the media deems the best ones. Um, we need to make sure we got the right ones coming in our building, and uh, we'll spend where we need to spend, but we have the flexibility to do it. In Cincinnati, uh, you were in a situation that you did not have a quarterback when you went in. And so, in essence, Zach Taylor and you and the rest of the staff had to take it down to the studs. You don't have to do that with the Titans. No. Does that change how you draft and sign for now based on the fact that you knew in Cincinnati you had to take a long-term approach? Um, you know, I don't ever think you get a long-term approach. Um, I think that's a – you know, a long-term <laughs> approach is three years now. It used at to be five. At best, yeah. at best. At best. Yeah. So, right. um, I, I think you always operate with the. We're trying to put the best team on the field each year, um, and whatever that looks like. So, if we need, if we need free agency, if we need to draft, however we have to do it, we're trying to put the most competitive, best team on the field every year. And there's long range. There's drafting with long range. There's signing for long range. Then there's then there's signing those guys that come in and help you for for a year or two to keep keep moving forward and so um, I think that's the best way to describe it is you're, you're trying to put the most competitive team on the field every year uh, while you still have a little bit of a long-range view in mind but knowing that you have to supplement that somewhere with a short term as well so uh, that's probably the best way to put it out there well put yeah. yeah as you're going through this time of year what has surprised you the most about the responsibilities that you've had to have as a head coach honestly and this may sound weird not much um I just I've been in this rhythm for for a long time, and I know a little bit about what's what's happening. I think the amount of uh, little things that come up that aren't necessarily big deals, but they're just things that come across my desk uh, is new. That part's new, I, I, not to be un, not unexpected, but new. Um, and then the the scheduling part is is really what where I spend a lot more time than I thought I might. But it is you're thinking about schedules and when you're going to do what and how the install for the offense and defense is going to look and what's the offseason program scheduled during the day going to look like how, you only have so many hours and you get more for phase two and phase three uh, how do you want to move those around when's our veteran mini camp how's that going to look so there's just a lot of um, scheduling that that falls on my plate that's what I'm responsible for at the end of the day is making sure that that day that day-to-day -day schedule that monthly schedule uh, is all set for the offseason so that, I've spent more time on that maybe than I thought I would, but I think about it a lot. We all know well that you are the son of a coach, and yet your dad did not give you the chances. You came up and did it on your own. And yet the fact that you're not overwhelmed by being a head coach might be as big of value with your experience as being the son of a coach as anything Bill Callahan provided you with? Yeah, I, th I just – I've seen it done um, – I've, I've had the conversations with my dad. I feel prepared. Um, there's been nothing that's come up at this point in, in my short time uh, that's surprised me. There's been a lot of things I felt really good about um, and feel very confident in, the, in what I wanted to do and how I wanted it to look. Um, I'm sure things will come up here sooner than later, but uh, for the most part, I've, I feel very confident in, in how I was prepared to get here, my dad being a big part of that. Um, and then obviously my time with Zach Taylor where I was involved in a lot of the decision-making process um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So I've, I've seen a lot more than maybe your, your average first-time head coach, and, and that's, I think, been a benefit. We know your dad's a great, head, or a great coach, and we don't want to take that away, but has it just been kind of nice to have him around? Oh, it's been fantastic. <laughs> I, I was talking to him the other day just, you know, I get to walk in, I grab a cup of coffee, I go walk in his office, and we talk about whatever. I mean, sometimes it's about my kids, sometimes it's about looking for a house, sometimes it's about – uh, how we want to how we want to turn the run game and uh, you know it, it's just nice to have that resource and I, and I walk in there a couple times a day and 
you know, I may he may just hey, what's going on? What do you got going on? And I may just run through the day, and he may say, hey, have you thought about this? And I, no, I haven't. And I should think about that. Um, so it's just it's he's been a great resource uh, as a as a football coach, and then it's been really fun just to be able to go kind of shoot the breeze with my dad in his office and talk about whatever's on my mind. It's been fun spending time with you over this last month, and we're looking forward to a lot more. Appreciate you taking time for us at the, at the Combine. Of course. Good to be here. For head coach Brian Callahan and A.B. Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanking you for listening to the OTP. Welcome to the big show where the legends go. Everybody knows it's our house.